What up, what up, Bars Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Dropping Bars podcast. I am your host, Kimron Corian, and today I have Mr. Antonio Prescott uh, with me, a fellow uh, Caribeño, fellow Caribbean man. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Hello, fellow Caribbean man like myself from uh, from, from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm from Grenada, so we're very close by. Um, Antonio, welcome to Dropping Bars. Thank you very much, and I love the introduction. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, so Antonio, uh, why don't you tell the Bars Nation, who is Antonio Prescott? Antonio Prescott is a guy that saw the vision for sales, and seeing that sales is a profession that you have the capacity to earn unlimited commission, it just loaned my mind. And I would just like to share a short snippet of Antonio Prescott's story, how it is that he got into sales. So essentially, right. my deceased father, he, his best friend, told me, Antonio, a lady is selling a vehicle at a very reasonable price. I believe that despite that you have a vehicle, you should still go to see this vehicle and if you want to maybe start your business with that vehicle or keep it for yourself, sell it. So ever the case is. This was approximately, I would say, 19, 20 years of age. Went, saw this vehicle, Kimron, and the vehicle was in great condition, but the lady had some financial strains. So she said, Antonio, I will sell this vehicle to you for approximately 1500 USD. And I bought that vehicle and I was able to sell that vehicle and earned a hundred percent profit. And from wow. then Kim Run, I decided that I'm going to sell anything that I'm get my hands on. And I started to sell electronics, women clothes. Then I morphed into working at different companies or plants, companies that I sell home care products and essentially now selling my services as a sales marketing linking trader coach. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So right now, oh, yes. like I said, you sell anything you get, you get your hands on. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh that's that's so that that's good. Now, um tell me tell me a little bit about um the the Antonio now before before the sale started. So in terms of a bit a little bit of your upbringing. So I, I imagine you grew up in Trinidad or was it you grew yeah, up outside yeah, of Trinidad? I, yeah. I Grew up in Trinidad, to be exact, in Trinity here, which is mm -hmm. close to the airport and Trinity Mall. I'm sure most people in the Caribbean yes. know that I know, mall. Yeah, I know it. Huge yes. mall. Yeah. So essentially, humble person who always looking to help others because I believe in being a cheerful giver. I believe that when it is you bless others, it will be reciprocated and it not necessarily mean that when you bless others that you have to broadcast it on social media. That is something that you keep within your heart and Amen. in that way, blessings come your way. But anytime you broadcast it and you tell others and these things, it's like you're doing it for the publication side of it, the, 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 the right. public figure, not necessarily out of your own genuine heart. Okay, so now uh, you 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 started like I say, about 1920. You sold you sold the car. Realized that okay, mm -hmm. you, you love sale. You realized that you had a uh, as you, you had an affinity for it. Uh, you went on to you know uh, start selling uh, different products, different services. Um, today you have your 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 you have your own business. You you sell your services as a, a, a trainer, consultant, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Now, uh, do you? In in terms of um starting your own business, because I know you, you you worked for um companies before, yeah. How did you how did you what what was the impetus that said to you that you wanted to transition from working for somebody or working for a company to to doing your own thing? What was that? Mm. What was that driving force for you? Great question. Seeing that as a salesperson, you are considered an entrepreneur. Once it is that you could sell and bring in revenue for an organization, if you use your brain capacity a bit more, then you could own your own business. So when I saw that I was selling so much for the companies that I work for, I told myself that I could sell for my own self. And then with the 
invention of SaaS companies, software as a service. I was intrigued at how these companies generate so much revenue and that their overheads were so limited because they don't need a brick and mortar building. They essentially just sell a service like a software service. They sell in the technological space. And I decided now, hey, why not sell my service as a sales and marketing trainer coach to companies, to individuals? And when I got the first opportunity and I saw how it feel, make me feel so great inside to know that I delivered a training and not just delivered, but the attendees, they get so much out of it that there was like, hey, awesome, you know, continue doing what you have to do. So that gave me that inspiration. And from there, I just continued and I just each time try to better myself. So it's all about the attendees. It's all about the business, the companies that I train and not about me. It's all about delivering a bespoke training and not a generic one, you know? Right. So you, 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 you focus on delivering value uh, right. so that the participants can, can get something from it. And it's not about what you are, what you what you want, but it's what really what they want. That's exactly. uh, because I I yeah. do training as well, and and it's 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 a similar mindset. So mm -hmm. so tell me so tell me then, you know, as it relates to, uh, what 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 did you have any any in making that transition from going from selling for a company? And um, by the way, was it was it a case whereby you were selling and it was like a, a commission based selling, or was it a case whereby you there's a, there's a base salary plus commission on the sale or it was just strictly salaried what, what, what was it like when you're work, working for the company i worked at electrolux and it was salary base salary traveling and we would get like allowance for our phones and such and eventually as time go by then they brought out a commission based structure and it really was helpful because now we get inspired motivated to sell more because the more we sell as the more that we can earn. Right. Yeah. Okay. That 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 I I, I thought I thought so. So now did you have did you have any 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 obstacles along the way um that you had to overcome as uh when you're working for, for those companies as a as a a sales professional? Um uh if yes, what were they? How did you overcome them? And 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 also did you have any obstacles in when you were moving from working for a company to working for yourself? And what were some of those obstacles that how did you overcome that? Working for a company and dealing with customers, it could be irritating, irritating at times because you have to really understand the customer needs wants. And most customers can run, don't even know what they want. It's like <laughs> I'm selling home care products. Let's say a customer walks into a showroom and they want to purchase a refrigerator. I will ask the necessary questions. The size of your family, tell me, what are you looking for? Is it a top monk refrigerator side by side? What color, stainless steel, white or black? What price point are you working with? Is it that you have a budget or you don't have a budget? And they will be like, well, I'm not too sure. Um, it's three of us in the family and I think that we may want a white refrigerator. But then after, I love the stainless steel so, you know, I have to think about it. What do you think? I think that you should go for the stainless steel. But then after, my husband told me that he liked white. So, <laughs> you know, and these kind of things, it will give get, get you irritated, but you really have to work with the customer. And that could be a, a bit of a challenge, you know? So that was some of the challenges faced working for an organization and then now entering into my own as being a service provider, it was a lot challenging as well because what I would say, and I will say this, you know, truthfully, in my country, Trinidad, it have a lot of bureaucracy. And when it comes to selection of a trainer for a company, the decision-making process, it takes so long. They know that they have a gap that needs to be filled. And it's like they're taking one month, two months to make a decision. But I started to utilize LinkedIn heavily and I got opportunities more internationally. And 
if I have a meeting with some potential clients in the US and they realize that after the conversation, hey, I need this service and this guy seems like a great service provider, they instantly would say, yes, I need your service. Let's start next week. They don't even think twice about it. So right. the opportunities on an international scale was more than my local country. I love my country, Trinidad and Tobago, but in terms of the decision-making process, we should be a bit snippy on it. You know you have a need. You know that if it is that need don't be filled, it will cost the company money. So why not just go forward with it and bring a solution to that problem? Yeah, I I, I, I get what you're saying. Sometimes the bureaucracy in, in organizations um, hmm. could, be, could be crazy sometimes, <laughs> both, both the public and the private sector. So now, uh, Antonio, let's 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 talk a little bit more about um, what what you do, the service that you offer. So I know you call your service S marketing, yes, or, or, or S marketing. I don't know. So do you pronounce it S marketing or S marketing? Marketing, S marketing. S marketing. <laughs> so t- tell me, tell me about tell me about S marketing because the truth is, I I, I haven't heard that before. I, 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 um, before you, you, you mentioned it to me and, and, and I, I read it in the message that you sent to me. So what is marketing? Like, talk to me about that. Well, the great thing about marketing is that if someone was to go and search that on Google or in a dictionary, may not all dictionary to be in, but it's actually a word just it's sales and marketing combined together. We've seen the modern day seller he has or she has to be a marketer as well because you need to market before you sell. So you have to incorporate the two if you want to be a modern-day seller. The traditional seller, he was more focusing on the sales, but the market has become so competitive that you have to do more. You have to do marketing. You have to do sales. You have to do personal branding. You have to incorporate some sort of graphic design because when it is now that you are let's say, selling your catalog and you have to change it around for that particular industry. You may not necessarily all the time reach out to your graphic designer, certain things that you could tweak for yourself, you know, so you need all these things combined to be effective as a modern-day seller. Right, right. And and if you were to, if you were to um, provide some, I guess, some advice, so to... Maybe there's a somebody somebody who's watching who might be in a business. They're working in sales and marketing. Uh, what kind of what kind of tips can you can you give to to, to persons who might be interested in in, in sales as to, to become better at sales? Like what what advice can you tell somebody to say, hey, you can you can do X Y Z if you want to become better at sales? Definitely, I would start by one understanding your customer needs. It's all about the customer and not about you. I think companies don't understand the fact that people buy from people. So you may have a product or products and they don't necessarily have to agree with the customer because they want something different. So once you understand the needs, the wants of the customer, then after you could know what to provide. Two, honesty and integrity. Customers don't like when it is that a business may tell a tale, lie to them. You always want to have transparency. Integrity and character is most important because if you don't have a good character, you don't have anything. Your brand, your identity is your character and it falls behind your business because you're representing your business. Three, research and development. You always need to check what your competitors are doing and see if it is that you could provide an authentic service or authentic product different from them. Don't necessarily because... Let's say they're providing a certain product that you should provide that to. Maybe you could be different, but you have to understand what the market needs right now. What is trending is not necessarily always the best way forward, but understanding the needs, understanding, hey, I can be different. That could be a game changer to any business. Four, being on social media. I'm not just saying Instagram, Facebook, but being on all these different platforms. It's a reason, Kimron, that these platforms are free. It's for us to utilize. I could go and speak in a group of 100, 200 persons, and that is only what I can reach. 
But if I were to do a video and disperse that on different social media platforms, I could reach thousands of people. So we need to incorporate social media into our business and not just Facebook, Instagram, but I would say YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a platform that you really want to incorporate because it has all the persons who in the corporate environment and you can easily connect with decision makers. Sometimes you may call an organization, cool call, and it may be someone new as the receptionist and you are asking for someone in the purchasing department and they may mix it up and give you someone in the marketing department. But when you utilize LinkedIn and you have like Sales Navigator that is a premium subscription that you pay for monthly, approximately 100 USD per month, which is beneficial, you now could utilize that software, which is a separate entity of LinkedIn, but it's related to Inc. LinkedIn. You could go and see who are the decision makers for each organization. So you now getting the ideal decision makers rather than calling a company and it could be someone new or they could make a mistake and they give you that wrong person, which is basically wasting time and we know time is money. Right. No, that's that's great. Those are, those are some 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 great Thank tips, you. and I hope that the people people that are, that are that are looking on that works in a business, works in sales marketing, um, that you, they actually pay that pay particular attention uh, to what to what you were saying. So now, in terms of what you do, so you do sales sales training. So as of right now, you no longer do the actual sales itself, but you focus on the training. No, all right. Yeah, I don't actually do the sales itself because I find that it's so much information that I have to provide because I'm always updating myself. I love technology and when we see the modern day seller, you need to incorporate all the new technology that keep on rolling out. So some salespeople, when it is that I have conversations with them, they not they don't realize that this new technology has come out in the market because they enter the same traditional selling, cool calling, going to prospects, which is not bad. But hear this, if it is now I, as I mentioned, could utilize LinkedIn, see who are the decision makers, message them, send them an email, and then book a meeting with them. Then I go and we have that meeting. Rather than I go to them and all they give you is a generic email address because they don't know you or your company, so they right. free to give you the actual email address. So you know, essentially, wasting time. And as we know, time is money. Right. So, so for you, LinkedIn is LinkedIn is a great um lead generator for you in, definitely in because linkedin right now reach over 900 million people on linkedin and when we think about linkedin the first thing comes to mind yes i know job opportunities but it has morphed into more what other platform that you know of that you could go and you could type in kim run korean and see well hey this guy he does trading training and stuff you know podcasts and these things you wouldn't know that on Instagram or Facebook, but you get to know who maybe the CEO of Republic Bank on LinkedIn. But if you type in the person's name, you would know if they are the CEO of Republic Bank or Scotia Bank. So just by getting that insight, you know exactly who you are prospecting to. So I think right. that is, is, you know, tremendous. And and would you say you get most of your clients right now from social media, LinkedIn in particular, or one do you get, to get them from, from like other, other, other areas? If I tell you something, Kieran, I hardly, you know, leave home because the time I leave home is so much people messaging, hey, let's book a call because the world now is not limited. We have social media, everybody is interacting virtually and the pandemic has taught us that we could actually work with each other, any part of the world. So I realized that every time I leave home, if I leave home to meet one client, yes, if it's a meeting that we booked, definitely I will give that time. But if I just go out to prospect, it don't make sense. It's better I stay in front of the computer. I have my phone. I have all the different social media platforms and I utilize. Have a conversation virtually. Have a next one and utilize my time. I love the fact that I time blocking where you schedule out your hours and what tasks that you do so that with that structure it will bring more results for you so most of your prospecting is done online definitely you, 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 don't, you don't have the proposals or anything like that well i will send 
proposals online and these things, but to still like to go in person only if mm-hmm. it is true online that someone book a meeting and they said they rather meet in person. Yes, yeah, I don't mind. You, yeah. Okay. No, that's 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 really good. That's really good. Um, no. Um, is there is there any 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 sales advice that you hear people giving other people that you know is total nonsense? Like yes. <laughs> can, you share, can you share one or, or maybe a two or with us that you hear people say, okay, you should do this or you should do that, and you know it's it's total nonsense that people should not be paying attention to it. Anything that we should not be paying attention to as, as, as sales advice or marketing advice, whichever one. Lead generation. It have people will be telling you, you need to obtain... 1,000 leads, because if you obtain 1,000 leads, the probability that you could close 100 is likely low. Leads can be qualified and unqualified leads. Imagine you are a loan specialist at a financial institution, and you have 1,000 leads. And out of those 1,000 leads, 800 of them achieve a salary of, let's say, 500 USD per month and to qualify for the loan that you are offering you need to have a minimum salary of 800 USD per month what will happen you just wasting your time because so many leads that you interact with so I want to say that you have to narrow down your leads as to who would be qualified leads to unqualified leads. Sometimes you could have a hundred qualified leads and close more leads than someone who gives you leads and it will be a thousand leads. So that is something that you really have to really know who it is that you are targeting and getting some sort of information about them, some sort of background information so that they and you yourself wouldn't waste each other time. Right. Okay. Gotcha. That that's good because I, I I do hear a lot of that advice going around. Try to get okay. as much as leads as possible so at least you improve the ten or whatever. So yeah, uh, yeah, don't work. <laughs> okay, great, great. So uh, Antonio, uh, talk to me about what are some of the the, the lessons like um, that you've learned along the way. Whether it's life lessons, business lessons, um, something that well, you know, sometimes we 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 hear like something from a a, a mentor or some expert, or maybe our parents, something that they will share with us that, that kind of, uh, I would say, um, help, help shape us who we are. Uh, what are some, what are some of the lessons that you, that you've learned along the way throughout your journey? Uh, you know, growing up in Trinidad, um, in your travels, working for companies, uh, working, uh, having your own business or as a, as a, as a smart right? Uh, what are some of the, what are some, uh, what, what are some lessons, life lessons that you, that you've learned along the way? that I can share with the Boss Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, one, Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people that you spend your time with. And this is extremely profound because if you are a young lady and you have around females who are considered as women who tend to flaunt themselves, if it is that you are looking at a guy that you see yourself being with and developing some sort of relationship and further into marriage, he may not necessarily look at you as that based on the friends that you have. So if you want to grow professionally, you need to hire around persons who you want to aspire to be. That is something that always stick with me. And based on traveling, I get to realize that in the Caribbean, if you tell someone, hey, Let's meet over a cup of coffee at a Starbucks location. They may be thinking that, you know, all sorts of different things. Is this guy trying to come on at me? Is this guy trying to take me away? You know, something like this. But internationally, if it is that you tell someone, let's have a conversation over a cup of coffee, they gladly will meet you because they realize that connections is everything. And let's be real. If a guy tells you that have a conversation and let's meet at Starbucks have a cup of coffee. In your right mind of thinking that guys have to be a good guy, a simple guy because another guy would say let's go and take a drink by the bar then you could be a bit more skeptical about that. So in the Caribbean we're not embracing change and when I say change 
understanding that without connections, you may not necessarily get to take the next step. Because when you think about employment, it's like 80% networking. Most of the job opportunities is not based on the qualifications that you have. It's based on persons knowing you. If it is that you work at a company and you were able to deliver exceeding results, your name now is circulating among a list of people and they will reach out. So networking is important. Universities, they don't teach this. They teach you how to obtain a degree, then further a master's, but they don't tell you when you get this that you don't necessarily will get an opportunity, Kimron. You now have to go and network with people, go networking events, go maybe take up a particular sport like golf, you know, where a lot of directors, businessmen plays the sport and you could network with these people and opportunities can come your way. So that is something that, oh, these are the things I should say that I learned in my life and I continuously embrace it because I realized that the more hands you shake is the more money you can make. I like that. The more hands you shake is the more money you can make. I, I like that. <laughs> That's really All right. But, uh, dope, dope. So, uh, Antonio, um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And as we, as we wrap up this, this, this interview, um, is there, is there any, if, if, if you had, if you had a chance to speak to, let's say, um, some young people, um, in, in where it's high school or whatever, from, from Grenada, from Trinidad or from anywhere in the Caribbean, what, what, what would you say to them? To like young people coming up? I would, I would say to them, having an education is great, but just sit back and think about the persons that you're going to work for. Most of them don't have the education level that you have. What they had and maybe still have is a vision. And they work on that vision endlessly, sleeplessly, and they achieve it. So don't think that when you have a degree or obtain a master's that everything will fall in your garden. The best advice I can give is utilize social media. We are seeing that YouTubers are becoming millionaires. We're seeing that persons actually utilizing Instagram, the social media platforms, and working, collaborating with companies and making a fortune. Whatever it is that you have a passion for, go for it. Because you don't want to live someone else's dream. That's my message. That's and that that is profound. Uh, leave your trip. You don't want to live someone else's trip. Uh, so, Antonio, uh, thank you so much for coming on to dropping bars and sharing those tidbits of wisdom with us. Thank you for coming and dropping some yeah, bars. Um, and is there any final thing you want to say to the bars nation? Any final thing you want to say to the bars nation? I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to have this interview with me. It's most appreciated and. Uh, I wish endless success and just keep positive in life. Things can be ruggy, but once it is that we keep on that narrow path, 100% we will be successful. It's just like something that, you know, have to manifest itself. And that's a, and that's a, that's a great way to end. So Bars Nation, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Dropping Bars. We were talking there with Mr. Antonio Prescott, the smart guitar out of, out of Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, again, Antonio, thank you for coming on. And Bars Nation, don't forget to, to subscribe, like, comment, um, wherever you're, you're consuming this podcast, whether it's on YouTube, whether you're on Apple Podcasts, whether you're on Spotify, uh, subscribe to the podcast, um, share the podcast with somebody who can benefit from it. And I will see you next week for another episode of Dropping Bars. Thank you, everyone, and see ya. Yo, a brighter star representing uh, Dropping bars with Kim Ran Korean. It's all about life lesson in a youth. Bob Molly do it with them mouth, see and do it with them food. Never doubt yourself. Never lose the focus. Just some more positive content, you know. Fully provision. Good meditation. Dropping bars and I build the motivation. Yo, Kim Ran Korean. Every ghetto youth, them a pre elevation. Stop carry feelings, focus on the arts and craft Get rid of all malice and dirty art, yo Work hard, believe in your dreams These are the motivation tips, dog. 
success strategies Energy follow energies Negative follow negativity There is a free will to creativity It's a journey within Cause we dropping balls Dropping balls Dropping balls We keep going on Going on Going on we keep dropping bars, dropping bars, dropping bars, dropping bars, dropping bars. We keep going out, going out, going out, dropping bars, dropping bars.